Welcome inside Gillette Stadium, everybody. My name is Mike Petralia, joined by Ryan Hannibal, Patriots writer for WEEI.com. Ryan, we finish up day number two of the NFL draft, but of course, day number one for the Patriots' participation uh, in the draft. And they address needs on the offensive and defensive sides of the ball. They had four picks and they split them evenly. They start with uh, taking Cyrus Jones, a cornerback out of the University of Alabama, the defending national champions, and obviously with the Nick Saban connection with Bill Belichick. It's a pretty natural selection. That and he is a big corner, five foot ten, two hundred and ten pounds. Played on the outside at Alabama, but definitely can play inside, and he's also a significant uh, a factor in the punt return game. He had four punt returns for touchdowns. Your thoughts on the Cyrus Jones pick to start things off here on Friday? I think you sort of hit everything on the nail on the head. You know, he plays for Nick Saban in Alabama, so that checks off one box. He's pretty versatile in the secondary. He's big. That checks off another box. They sort of had a need at the cornerback position, I think, looking towards the future, maybe some uncertainty with some of their guys there moving forward, and then also the, the kicker training and punt returning ability. I think all those factors factored in, you know, with the number of different things he can do, and it wouldn't be surprising to me to see him be the Patriots punt return this year to sort of take the load off of Julian Edelman and uh, Danny Amendola. Nick Casario, the Patriots' director of player personnel, was very gracious with his time after the evening was over. Spent about 15 or 20 minutes with the media here in this very room. And I had a chance to ask Nick if uh, whether or not the Patriots were seriously considering a running back because a lot of the talk up, Ryan, as, as we know, uh, heading into this draft, was that the Patriots were seriously considering a running back, uh, perhaps Derrick Henry out of Alabama, obviously Cyrus Jones' teammate, or perhaps a Kenneth Dixon type out of Louisiana Tech. Uh, and he said, look, we went with the best player that fit all of the spots we were looking for that was highest on the board and happened to be Cyrus Jones. We move on uh, to their very next pick, and that was um, an offensive line. It was an interesting pick because this is another guy um, a little bit uh, along the, you know, the mold of a versatile offensive lineman that uh, Dante Skarnecchia back with the Patriots and Bill Belichick like in Joe Tooney out of North Carolina State. But what was interesting is that as uh, Joe Tooney was being uh, interviewed by the Patriots uh, media uh, in the room uh, right behind us, uh, he was informed that his teammate, uh, Jacoby Brissett, was also drafted by the Patriots. It was an interesting one-two punch pulled off by New England. Your thoughts on that? It was a it was a good back-to-back -back selection. I think that they addressed the offensive line, obviously, but I think he was the ultimate Patriot pick because he can play every single position on the offensive line. I think when Casario spoke a couple minutes ago, he talked about how Dante Sarnecchia worked him out and even worked him out at center. Um, he was strictly a, a left tackle last year, but he's played every position on the offensive line, which is obviously great for the Patriots. So I think that's obviously the reason why they took him. They'll sort of you know see what they have with him here, right. and taking quarterback. You know, as Chris Price always mentions, the Patriots always take a quarterback. Right. And so it's really, but to me, the, the surprising thing was that they took quarterback so high. I kind of thought they'd maybe take a quarterback with one of their sixth or seventh round picks. But I guess, you know, they really like what they see taking quarterback in the third round. So I think, you know, down the road, that sort of lends, you know, the Jimmy Garoppolo decision comes up where maybe they get rid of him for, uh, see what they can get from him after, with the trade after this round, after the season and the first four games. So I think it was interesting that they took a quarterback so high, but not surprising that, that they took a quarterback at all. Right, and because you usually don't see a third rounder um, chosen as a, a developmental player really at any position, but uh, the Patriots feel, like, as you said, they really uh, like what they saw in Jacoby Brissett. And as far as uh, Joe Tooney is concerned, uh, he did tell us in the conference call that his preference – uh, would be to play inside. That's where he feels really the most comfortable, but in a pinch he could move outside, and certainly last season uh, with the Patriots we saw that that need came up more often than they would certainly like to see. Uh, Patriots finished up the uh, 2016 day number two draft uh, by addressing, going back to the defensive side of the ball, uh, defensive tackle out of Nebraska, Vincent Valentine. And now what's interesting about this, I thought, Ryan, is that his teammate was picked at the top of the third round by the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, so it's a situation where you, you see uh, two defensive linemen on a very good defen uh, Nebraska defensive front chosen. Your thoughts on Valentine joining this uh, Patriots defensive line and whether or not he, like Malcolm Brown did last year out of Texas, make an impact right away. 
See, to me, I thought they were actually going to go higher with, with the defensive linemen. I thought they maybe they would use either, either 60 or 61 on a defensive lineman. So you sort of knew going in that it was a need going into draft, and I thought maybe they might have addressed it a little more higher. Maybe them taking him as low as did, maybe thinks that they're okay on the defensive line as it stands right now. Maybe they have you know plans for you know someone else to come in. And we forget about Terrence Knight, so they did address it a little bit. So I think right. I think they were maybe felt more comfortable than some on the outside thought with the defensive lineman, and that's why they waited till the third round the end of the third round to take one but they needed depth obviously at the position and hope of ride some depth chris price pointed out uh, to us uh, off microphone as uh, we were just chatting up uh, what the possibilities are uh, in uh, day number three on saturday that they may not take just one but maybe two running backs uh, do your thoughts that uh, the patriots may address that running back need a couple of times on saturday yeah it's, it's definitely a need and i think with the number of picks that they have they can afford to you know take some changes on a couple of guys so maybe it, it is worth taking two running backs and seeing you know maybe one pans out and one doesn't so with the number of picks they have they have some flexibility whether it's trading off or taking changes on a couple of guys so i think with the number of picks certainly helps them tomorrow be sure to follow along day number three of the NFL Draft down here at Gillette Stadium. Ryan Hannibal and Chris Price will be on site. Uh, follow their work on the It Is What It Is blog on weei.com. They do fabulous work, and I can As definitely. you, Trev. Uh, thank you very much, Ryan. You didn't have to do that, but you are very kind. It's been a long day, but it's been a long day for everybody, right? Anyway, uh, it uh, will be an interesting day number three to see how the Patriots, with their roster currently at 80, um, it'd be if they make all eight picks on Saturday, be, their uh, roster would be at 88, just two below the NFL maximum. It'll be interesting to see how it goes. For Ryan Hannibal, I'm Mike Petralia inside Gillette Stadium, weei.com.